My name is Arun Kumar. I'm the driver. Welcome to Driven Diary, episode 59. What is Driven Diary? It's the documentation of my life as I build a billion dollar automotive service business called Driven Auto Co. Driven Auto Co is made up right now of a consulting business, which helps sell automotive companies, and a business that owns automotive repair shops. We currently own two shops, one in Fremont, California, and one in Campbell, California, and we're actively looking for more shops to buy. Now, Driven Diary really exists to be a journal, a diary, as it is, to capture what early stage entrepreneurship looks like as I go from the very beginning to a billion dollar company. And I wanna show what it's like because I think there's a lot of people who pick up documentation along the way who don't get to show you what it was like, who don't get to show you the fact that they screwed up and lost a bunch of money, the fact that they got sued and got through it, the fact that they just like almost lost everything on numerous occasions. And that's what I'm out here to document. And I take a very small amount of time to do this every week. You can tell from how rushed all these clips are. And I'm just doing this for posterity's sake so that we can all look back on it and see how far Driven Auto Co can come. I'm really proud of where we're at and I'm very excited for where we're going. In this week's video, I go on a bit of a long anti-tax rant, so I'm sorry about that in advance. Uh, I go look at another new shop, very exciting stuff. I've, I've actually had a couple of different conversations with selling shop owners this week. And I'm extremely tired and wiped out pretty much the whole week because I'm running the Campbell shop while my service advisor and hopefully soon to be manager Alex is off at training. All that said, let's get to the video. thing probably hasn't been moved in uh, 25 years, maybe 30. Monday afternoon and welcome to Driven Diary episode 59. I am running the Campbell shop this week. Alex is at training in Utah with the Institute and I'm just hectic. It's hectic. It's about all I got to say about that. And I wrote the check <clears throat> today to officially cancel Walt's weekly, daily service to the business. <clears throat> and uh, we'll see how that goes when I deliver the news tomorrow. Obviously this video will come out after that, which is good because we'll see what happens. <clears throat> um, it's been very hot for like a week and a half. I'm glad it's finally going to start cooling off tomorrow and it just feels like I am really sweating to make a lot of things happen right now and um, I'm getting a little nervous about cash flow um, knowing everything that I need to continue to write checks for so hopefully I am able to continue to crank up sales Fremont Shop's having a little bit of a trouble with quality but you know day by day as a lot of these things end up going and by Friday I may not even remember everything I'm saying but yeah right now I'm feeling a little pinched got plenty of things I need to buy for the Campbell shop that I just don't have the money to buy unfortunately so we will persevere Monday feels like a Monday that's for sure that's all for now Tuesday, it's the 8th of October, 11.26 in the morning, and came in at 6.30, woke up at 3.30. I've been balls to the wall, shorts advisors work, and, and just trying to manage the shop at the same time. And it is one of those stretch thin situations, and I augmented it because of that financial strain I was talking about yesterday. So I uh, handed Walt his final paycheck and said all right your services are no longer needed sir um which he was a bit surprised and taken aback by but 
we will overcome. And then I had a very interesting situation where I intended to lay off another employee and was convinced not to by yet another employee who I had the opportunity to kind of front run with. So God has a plan, that timing worked out and that employee will be staying on board for the time being as we work to develop a sort of career plan for them. Hectic morning for sure. And I'm feeling the wear, but is what it is today. I don't have a long evening of plans at least, so. As long as the Schwartz Advisors work doesn't pile up and I keep on top of it, we should be in good shape. We like big gold trucks. Just came outside. It looks like we got a new sign up. That's a good feeling. Good way to end the uh, Tuesday. So, like I just said, Tuesday afternoon, just sent home the last technician for the day. Letting the dog, there's a lot going on out here. Letting the dog use the bathroom. And we have $75,000 of work in progress between the two shops right now. That is insane. Now we just need to get it all done. And we need to make sure we have enough solid technicians in the shop in order to do that. So that's where we're at right now. Let's keep getting the work done. Still Tuesday, 5.30, and I'm going to read you an email that I've just written. And it's to my business coach, Cecil. Subject line, two shops, dot, 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 two more, question mark. I have two very motivated sellers in good locations who have started acquisition talks with me, not the other way around. Uh-oh. We have $75,000 in work in progress between the two shops. Not quite fully staffed. Campbell Shop has some tenant improvements and equipment investments to make. Alex is benefiting from the training. Metrics are pretty poor in Campbell, but decent in Fremont. Give it another month in Campbell and we will be 70K plus in October with two techs. I've got a baby due at the end of November, a wife who wants me to stay home, and as much as I cherish my kid coming, all I want to do right now is keep building shops. I really wish California did not have this eight hour BS and we could work 50 hour work weeks without it costing an arm and a leg. The bank account today is about as low as it's been in, in seven months. And we have $75,000 of work in progress in the shop. So talked about this cash flow crunch. No cars barely got out today. Bank account should be going in the right direction, but yeah, you just gotta get, keep getting cars out. That's about it for now. Six fifty-nine a.m. Wednesday, and got to work. Set up my laptop. Did the RO audit for the day. Went and gassed up the loaner car. Cleaned the windows. Put everything away. Cleaned up some spider webs in the lobby. Made it back up to my office. Six fifty-nine. Now it's seven a.m. Time to get on a call. Only call of the day. Running the shop. Life is good. <laughs> Down to the minute, every second counts. Sitting here, slinging automotive service, Wednesday morning, and I love this job, but also, I, <laughs> uh, still dealing with the uh, cash flow pinch and found a solution, or one. I was able to call Chase and get a credit card limit increase of it went from what 30 to 43,000. So 13 grand extra that'll definitely help just uh, give me some breathing room for the next few days. But it's funny how just little things like this, little moves, can make a difference. That's the fourth time in I think as many months that I've requested a credit line increase. Um, I'm gonna just need to keep doing it as the business keeps growing because you know I'm spending 
like 30 grand a week on this credit card and I have a 30 grand limit and uh, the money doesn't always come back in that quickly. So it is nice to have the ability to have that balance grow and shrink with time. So excellent. That's all for now. Thursday afternoon. I got to bed at about 11 last night. I've been waking up at like 3.30ish most days this week because I am running the Campbell shop. Um, had an interesting development today. We had the only employee of the body shop next door to our Fremont location left us a one-star review for work that we did in August of 2023 that had a, um, I, I think we ended up putting a 24,000 mile warranty on the spark plugs. He drove the thing 40,000 miles and needed new spark plugs, supposedly, and wanted us to warranty them, uh, but was very rude and accusatory in, in arriving at that uh, request, and I did not feel inclined to help him. Um, and he's claiming we ripped him off and were too expensive, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I'm like, you know you could walk next door and talk to us. You don't have to leave a one-star review. Because now, two things can happen. Either you're going to take that review down, or we're going to destroy your business. That's how I feel about that. I don't like those guys anyways. They waste our time with stupid questions. Both times that both the owner and the employee have come and had work done with us, they've tried to dictate their own price. They complain about the work. So, we'll see how that goes. I don't mind putting them completely on blast. That is, that is some unprofessional and immature behavior. So, we'll see what happens. But I'm ready to fight them over that for sure. <laughs> I am, I'm tired today. That's all. It's October 10th, Thursday, still 6.30 p.m. It's 2024. And... I voted in 2020. I guess I lived in in uh, in London at the time, but in October of 2020, I went back to the states for the first time uh, since COVID had hit, and it was a very jarring experience for a couple of reasons. Number one was I had no clue what other people's perception of COVID was. I was living my life very normally in the UK. No panic, no masks, no anything really. And uh, we all kind of thought it was a joke. And came back here and I was told to wear a mask in my own house. So that was interesting. Um, and, and number two, you know, it, like I didn't, I, I still didn't think about politics in 2020. Not in the way I do now. I've come a very long way in how I think about politics. I've come a very long way in a lot of ways. But one of those things is is this overarching principle that I just want to share. And I think it's reasonable for my own perspective and my own life experience. And it's this. I don't believe that the government is an efficient way to manage things in our lives. Because they make the laws, they enforce the laws, they fund the enforcement of the laws, and then they write the tax code. And if you think about public services as a business, and you think about what the government is supposed to do, it's supposed to administer public services, it's going quite a bit further than that in my eyes today. So I think this ballot that I just got for this year uh, matters a lot more than I've ever thought before. It's Friday morning, 7 a.m. I got cut off yesterday, but to finish, you know, a couple things. Um, I was going down the path of saying government, uh, you know, is responsible for, for public services and that they are also responsible for creating the laws that um, 
help pool money from the public to fund those public services. And so as a result, there is no incentive to be the most efficient that they can be because they can just change the tax code and raise more money. And they can wrap it up in a pretty little bow so that people don't understand that what's happening is their taxes are being jacked up on them again. And there's property taxes and excise taxes and sales taxes and income taxes and registration taxes and tolls and fees and permits and income tax and employer funded income tax and Medicare and social security. It's a big fucking load on the American population. And depending on where you are, it's over 50% of your income. So that's why we are planning on moving out of California to places like South Dakota, where the tax code is very, very different and much more progressive towards the public keeping their own damn money. Because at the end of the day, go to the DMV, go to the post office, go to any government agency, go to the courthouse, go to the city's business office. These are some of the most inefficient places, the most inefficient places in the country. And yet we all like have to rely on them. You can't go anywhere but the DMV in order to get the license plate for your car. That's crazy. And so taking one other step back, this is the second thing that I mentioned at the beginning of this rant. When I lived in the UK, I noticed a couple things. Number one, a lot of the government was significantly more efficient as enabled by technology. So as last week, you saw that when I was at the courthouse, they didn't have the option to scan in a document or receive an email um, or print for me. That kind of technology scares me that that's where our government is at, where in the UK, you can process nearly everything online. That has its pros and cons because it means it's a lot easier to commit fraud in government instituted, you know, institutions, I guess, like probably a lot easier to make a fake ID if you just do it all <laughs> online. Um, but then also it was a lot more big brother as enabled by technology. You had to have an app to track your contact tracing for COVID. Uh, speed cameras can just mail you a, a speeding ticket automated and there's nothing you can do about it except pay the damn fine. Or you can buy a fake ID from somebody who can, who can generate them and then use that person to get yourself off the hook and, and just say, nope, they were driving my car. I wasn't driving my car. So it's a bit of a broken society when you think about it that way. And when I came back to the US in 2020, I felt free coming back here. I felt like I had the opportunity to make my own mistakes and learn from them and to suffer my own consequences, but also when I did things right to reap the rewards of it. But now we're moving towards a society where a mistake means you get backstopped by the government. You get your student loans forgiven. You can go on food stamps. There are a lot of ways in which the government can be responsible for helping you. And in that case, who's paying for it is, is the people who can actually pay taxes. And we have to keep raising the taxes so that we can raise this level of inefficiency and this level of irresponsibility among the people. And I don't want that. I want a responsible society that can have its own consequences that isn't ruled by any specific party. I don't want, I don't want, like, this isn't a, a Republican Democrat thing. This is just a, I don't need other people to handle my shit for me thing. Anyways, it is Friday morning. We're slated to do probably $30,000 in revenue today between the two shops which is a fantastic way to end the week. Uh, the cash flow crunch from earlier does seem to be subsiding. Uh, Schwartz Advisors closed the deal last week. As I mentioned, I got paid on that this morning. I immediately transferred all that money straight into the business. Um, and yeah, that, that hurt because, you know, like this $4,000 watch that I love um, and that I get a lot of pride out of and this car that cost me $1,000 a month, I could have more than paid for both of those things to buy another watch and make another car payment uh, off of what was a relatively small deal that I had a good amount of work into over the course of two years, but it was a small deal. So the payment wasn't that much, relatively speaking, but I could still afford to buy another watch and make another car payment um, and then some. So 
to just see that money get swallowed up because in the business here, a $30,000 revenue day is great, but it's off the back of a $30,000 revenue four days already this week. Um, so we, we need it. <laughs> um, anyways, that's enough. Six minute long clip. I'm sorry, folks. Friday morning. Talk to you later. Sunday evening, I'm looking at a new shop. And no, it's not San Mateo Lawnmower. It's also not Auto Works. And we'll see if I buy it. Welcome back, and that is all for Driven Diary episode 59. Um, I, I can't show you a shop that I'm looking at buying because it's confidential that, th that they're selling it. Uh, but it was a cool shop to go see. I've gone and looked at two shops this week and I'm kind of running the numbers in my head and you heard me talk about cash flow and at this point it's more of you know I, I know what the model looks like I know what needs to happen I know what works I'm trying to find shops that require a low amount of sort of additional investment to get them up to speed but that I don't have to spend a ton of money to buy because the more money I'm putting into these shops doesn't necessarily equate to immediate cash flow both these shops I'm looking at have a seller who very much works in the business and who would be retiring from the business as a result of the sale, which means I have to mostly focus on staffing. These are both really well built shops. They've got very nice equipment. They have great customers. They have the kind of customers I want. They have a business model that I like, but I need to start from scratch on the staffing. So interesting problem. It does mean that you can get those kind of businesses cheaper because it's not really a turnkey business that you'll be buying. We'll see. Anyways, that's all for this episode. So if you have any questions or feedback, please leave a comment below. Please leave a like so that we can show up higher in the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss next week's Driven Diary. And until next week, I encourage you to go out, document what you're doing to build your own empire with your life. I hope you continue to Enjoy your cars, work hard, and stay driven.